In this video, we will explore five stocks that could easily be considered not only undervalued, but pay out higher than average dividends. There are countless ways to value stocks. There are methods based on cash flow, earnings, dividend yield, revenue, growth rate, book value, and more. The concept of book value is really quite simple. By law, the company's assets have to be calculated and valued on at least a quarterly basis for investors to see. And based upon this value, investors can then compare the market value of the stock to the asset value on its balance sheet. By doing this, one can see if a stock trades below its theoretical liquidation value, which is essentially the net value of the company's assets minus the net value of its liabilities. For instance, if a company has $2 billion in assets and $1 billion in liabilities, its book value then would be the difference of the two, which would be $1 billion. That would be its theoretical value of the company if it were to close down and liquidate its assets. If the stock's total market cap is less than this $1 billion valuation, then the stock is considered to be undervalued based on its book value. In doing this, we can screen for stocks that are trading quite cheaply, as most stocks never trade below its book value. And for those that do, they tend to not stay there for long. Sectors that tend to see stocks below book value are financials, utilities, and certain consumer staples. This can happen in any sector, but these are the ones that are most prone to it. So let's jump in and check out our list of undervalued dividend stocks. Our first stock is Citigroup one of the major money center banks based in the U.S. Citi had perhaps the worst time of the money center banks recovering from the financial crisis. And even though the company has made enormous progress, it continues to still trade with very low valuations compared to its peers. The bank offers a full suite of financial products and services to individuals, corporations, municipalities, and others all around the world. It has a large credit card business, traditional banking business, wealth management, investment banking, and more. The company was founded all the way back in 1812 and generates $75 billion in annual revenue and trades with a market cap of around $88 billion. Here we can see Citi's mix of assets and how it calculated its book value. The company's book value has been pretty steady for the past few quarters at around $93 per share. Today, shares trade for just $50, which means that the stock is trading at a massive 54% of its book value. That's an extremely low value against books for any sector and any stock. So Citi is extremely cheap right now. Based on the severity of the undervaluation of the company, there could be a potential upside of about 10% annually from a valuation perspective alone. The stock also sports a yield of around 4.58% dividends annually, which is outstanding not only against the S&P 500, but also high relative to other banks. Since recovering from the financial crisis, Citi has become a very strong dividend stock. The stock is trading cheap for several reasons, including a recent failure of epic proportion. You see, cosmetic company Revlon filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier this summer, and instead of transferring an $8 million interest payment on behalf of Revlon to their creditors, Citibank instead transferred nearly $900 million of the bank's own funds to these creditors instead. Oops. Our next stock is British American Tobacco, which is a tobacco and nicotine products company that operates globally. It is perhaps best known for its Lucky Strike, Newport, and Camel cigarette brands, but it also offers heated tobacco, nicotine, and vaping products. While smoking has slowly fallen out of favor from a societal standpoint, BTI still generates a significant profit which will likely remain for decades to come. The company was founded in 1902 and generates $32 billion in annual revenue and trades with a market cap of around $87 billion. The stock's book value has increased in recent quarters to nearly $40 per share, and given that it trades right now for around $38, British American Tobacco's book value sneaks in at right under 100%. While it's not a significant discount, value is still value and should not be ignored. Having the stock price at around 95% of fair value, this could drive about a 1% tailwind in total returns for the coming year. However, the stock pays a staggering 7.76% dividend yield, making it a very rare company from a dividend standpoint. 
Growth is pegged at around 3% annually, so combining these factors gives us an expected annual return of close to 11%. Next up is Mercedes-Benz, the famous automaker based in Germany. This company has undergone several transformations over the decades, but today it offers Mercedes-branded cars, trucks, and vans across the world. The company was founded in 1886, making it the world's oldest automaker. It produces around $144 billion in annual revenue and trades with a market cap of about $69 billion. The stock ended the most recent quarter with a book value of around $75 per share, and it trades today with a value of less than $68. That puts it around 87% of book value, which could drive an 8 or 9% tailwind to total returns in the coming years, significantly adding to projected returns. In addition, the stock yields close to 8% annually at 7.77%. So Mercedes is not only cheap, but also offers an enormous dividend yield. Our next stock is Kraft Heinz, the maker of the food and beverage products that are on shelves across the world. Kraft Heinz offers a wide variety of dairy products, condiments and sauces, beverages, meats, dressings, and much more. Kraft is not a sexy stock pick like the Teslas or Apples of the world. Instead, Kraft is an example of slow and steady wins the race, and is one reason why billionaire investor Warren Buffett is so keen on the company, as Kraft represents his seventh largest overall holding. Overall, the company posts $26 billion in annual revenue and trades with a market cap of $46 billion. Kraft Heinz is not a high growth company, but we can see it expects high single digit organic sales growth this year which is pretty outstanding for a consumer staples company. Much of that growth is going to be driven by pricing increases to combat inflation and additional sales due to consumers that have stayed home and are were eating more during the COVID shutdowns. But the company may also be in a position in the marketplace such that it can command higher prices based on its status. The stock ended the most recent quarter with a book value of just over $39 per share, and it trades today at around 37, or about 95% of that book value. Given that the growth outlook for the company is relatively low, this may not be a great long-term growth pick for many investors, even though it is currently slightly under its value based on book value. However, for anyone trying to shore up their portfolio with safe, high dividend paying stocks to supplement their annual income, Kraft may just be the pick for you. Last up on the list is Fresenius Medical Care, stock ticker FMS. FMS is a company that provides dialysis care primarily in Germany and throughout the US. It offers a network of almost 4,200 clinics around the world, making it one of the largest companies of its types. Fresenius was founded in 1996 and generates about 19.5 billion in annual revenue and trades with a market cap of just under 11 billion. The stock ended the most recent quarter with a book value near $41, but the stock trades for around $15 today. That puts it at less than 40% of book value. Based on the valuations of its peers, that could easily drive a 7% or more tailwind in total returns in the years to come. The yield is also excellent at 3.5%. With a projected 3% annual growth for the stock, combining these factors means that analysts project around 14% of total annual returns to shareholders in the coming years. If there was one negative thing that I would say about FMS, it is that the stock only pays a dividend payout once per year in late May. Meaning that while it may be a solid choice for a long-term strategic play, its annual dividend payout does not fit well with anyone attempting to live their lifestyle based on dividend portfolio payments. So that's going to do it for us today. Five undervalued stocks that pay out higher than average dividends. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing for more videos, all things dividend related. And as always, I'll see you all again next time. Thanks.